Hey, good afternoon everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to model and animate a Geneva drive in SOLIDWORKS. A Geneva drive is a gear mechanism that translates continuous rotation from the drive wheel to intermediate rotary motion on the driven wheel. In the example here, the drive wheel is colored in purple, while the driven wheel is colored in teal. They have a wide array of applications, including but not limited to cameras, film projectors, and mechanical watches. We're going to start by modeling all of our parts, including the drive wheel, the driven wheel, and the base plate. Then we'll create an assembly and do a basic motion study to animate the movement of the mechanism. Before we get started though, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications about future videos on the channel. Now let's get started. To model our driving wheel, the first thing we're going to do is open up a new part file, making sure that our units are set to millimeter grams seconds. All right. And we're going to open up a new sketch on the top plane where we're going to create a center point circle like so and we'll set the diameter to be 95 millimeters and close out our sketch and hit the extruded boss base and we'll set our distance to be 10 millimeters and hit OK. Now we need to create two features on the top face of this part. One is a single cylindrical shaft that will act as a pin to trigger the rotation of the other wheel. And the other one is a crescent moon shape that will be centered in the part. So we'll start by opening up a new sketch on the top face. and creating a center point circle like so and another one we'll set this one to be a construction line because this will drive the position of our pin to create our pin we're going to create another center point circle right here at this left hand point of our construction circle like so and to create our crescent moon shape from our center circle we're going to create a larger center point circle based from this point like so alright let's add some dimensions so our center circle here is going to be 53 millimeters. Our circle here is going to be 54 millimeters. Our pin is going to be 11 millimeters. Our construction circle is going to be 76 millimeters. Alright. And we're going to use our Trim Entities tool, making sure that keep trimmed entities as construction geometry and ignoring construction geometry when trimming are both selected. And we're just going to trim away at this circle here, and then this segment of the center circle. So now we have our pin, and we have our crescent moon shape sketch is fully defined so we will hit the green checkbox and close out the sketch and do an extruded boss base again setting the depth to be 10 millimeters and the last thing we need to do is set a uh, rotational axis on the underside of the part so we'll select the underface 
create a new sketch, go normal to, and do a center point circle centered at the origin with a diameter of 10 millimeters. Close out the sketch, do an extruded boss base, and we're going to set our depth to be 10 millimeters as well, and hit OK. And we've successfully completed our driving wheel. Our driving wheel is going to have slightly more complicated geometry than our driven wheel. We'll start by opening up a new part file, making sure that the units are set to millimeters, grams, seconds, and we'll open up a new sketch on the top plane where we'll create a simple center point circle, like so, and we'll set the diameter for the circle to be 76 millimeters, and exit our sketch and do an extruded boss base, and we'll set the depth for our extrude to be 10 millimeters. All right. Now we're just going to carve away at this base model to create our final shape. So let's open up a new sketch on the top face and go normal too. And here we're going to make our slot. So we'll start by creating a center point circle. And then we're going to create another circle on this top point of our center point circle like so, and go to our line tool, and just draw three lines just like this, and double click to close the line tool. All right. Now holding control, we'll select the line and the edge and create a tangent relationship. We'll set this center point circle to be for construction and set its diameter to be 30 millimeters. This circle here we will set to be 11 millimeters in diameter and we'll use the trim tool to remove this section of the circle so we have a nice clean slot like so and our sketch is fully defined so we'll hit OK exit our sketch and do an extruded cut for the direction we're just going to select through all and hit OK alright so now we have our first slot now we need to create our groove. So we'll open up another sketch. Again, going normal too. And we're going to create another circle off over here. Dimension it to be 54 millimeters in diameter. And using the center line tool, create a line from this point to the center, then to the center of our sketched circle, and double click, close the line tool. We'll set the angle between these two lines to be 45 degrees, and the length of this construction line connecting the two centers will be 54 millimeters. Our sketch is fully defined, so we will exit our sketch and do an extruded cut. Again, we will set our direction to be through all. Hit OK. Alright, so now we have our slot and our groove. And what we're going to do is select both of these, holding control, and then go to Circular Pattern 
For the direction one, we're going to select the outer diameter of our shape. For the number of instances, we'll select four with an angle of 360 degrees and equal spacing. And everything looks good here with our preview, so we'll hit OK. All right. The last thing we have to do is add a small axis on the underside. So we'll select that face, create a new sketch, center point circle, like so. And we'll set the diameter to be 10 millimeters. Exit the sketch. And set our length to be 20 millimeters. And hit OK. Alright, and we've successfully completed our driven wheel. Now we just have to create the base and we can create our assembly. Our base is going to be relatively simple to model. We're going to open up a new sketch on the top plane and we're going to draw a center point circle centered at the origin and another circle to the left of it. And then we'll draw concentric circles within both of these, like so. And using our line tool, create two tangent lines at the top and bottom. Like so. Now holding control, we'll select the two inner circles here, set them to be equal. Set their diameter to be 10 millimeters. We'll select the two center points holding control and create a horizontal relationship between them. We'll set the center point to center point distance to be 54 millimeters. The smaller circle diameter will be 36 millimeters. And the larger circle will be 48 millimeters. Okay. Still have one line that's not fully defined, and we're not sure why, so the best thing to do is to just try and grab it and see if you can move it. Alright, so you see it doesn't have a tangent relationship with the smaller circle. So to fix that, we're going to hold control, select the line and the circle, and select tangent. Alright, now our sketch is fully defined. We just have to use our trimming tool to remove this portion of our large circle and this portion of our small circle, like so. Alright, hit OK, exit our sketch, and do an extruded boss base. Again, our depth is going to be 10 millimeters, and we'll hit OK. All right, now that we have our base, we can create our assembly. To create our assembly, we're going to start by opening up a new assembly file. Then we're going to put the base part in, like so. Go back to Insert Components, select the Keep Visible Thumbtack. And we're going to add in our driven wheel and our driving wheel, like so. Alright. Now to mate our parts together, we're going to go up to mates. And we're going to create a concentric mate between the driving wheel 
center axis and the hole here in our base. We're going to make sure that lock rotation is not selected because we want these parts to be able to spin freely. And hit OK. Then we'll create a coincident mate between the underside of the driving wheel and the top face of the base, like so. And for our driven wheel, we're going to select the center axis, do a concentric mate with this hole in the base, hit OK, and then create a coincident mate between the end face of the driving wheel center axis and the underside of the base, like so. All right, and we've successfully created our assembly. Now we just need to get our parts lined up to the best of our ability. Just to make sure that the face overlap is minimal. All right. Alright, and we're ready to create our motion study. So we'll go down here to motion study. And for this drop down, we'll select basic motion. And we will add a motor. Oh, we gotta close out of that. And we'll add a motor. And select our driving wheel. Reverse the direction. And set the rotations per minute to be 10. And hit OK. Expand that out to 10 seconds. And we want to create a contact between these two parts so that they interact with each other correctly. And the last thing we're going to do is modify our motion study properties. So we're going to set our frames per second to be 20. And our geometrical accuracy to be 10. And 3D contact resolution to also be 10. And hit OK. So now we'll hit Calculate to have SOLIDWORKS calculate our motion for us. And you see here, the models are behaving as they should. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a few things. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications about future videos on the Crowcheck Industries channel. And also be sure to leave a comment below with a tutorial that you would want me to do in the future. Thank you and have a great day.